Much of what happened in World War I had never happened before. Thankfully, much of the incompetence did not survive this war, and World War II saw far less casualties despite being 50% longer and larger with much more fighting. The major trouble for the fighting men on all sides in World War I was a high level of incompetence at the top levels of command. Generals, mainly with a cavalry background, refused to realize this was a different war in which the cavalry and the rifle played either no part or only a very small part. This was a war of machinery, artillery, machine guns, and ultimately tanks and aeroplanes. Barbed wire and the weather both played significant roles in the defeat of enemy attacks. Prior to any attack, it was imperative to gather intelligence, both from aerial photo reconnaissance and the interrogation of captured enemy soldiers. The British announced to the enemy that they were about to attack through prolonged artillery barrages upon the sought-after enemy positions, lasting anything from several hours to several weeks. The Germans soon countered this by defence in depth, firstly going underground while the artillery barrage persisted, then building more trenches further back from the front line. During the 1914-1916 era, these barrages were very unsophisticated due to poor weapons, training, communications and shells. The Germans led the way with better weapons and more reliable shells and better tactics, normally but slowly followed by the French-British alliance. Phase one of any attack depended on the attackers being firstly able to get through their own defensive barbed wire and secondly the wire of the enemy in all their different trench lines. The artillery barrage had many tasks before an attack could start and often in the first three quarters of the war these fundamental tasks were ignored or overlooked by impatient commanders usually it was a combination of both. Coming in all sizes for all occasions, artillery was a ruthless killing machine, blasting hundreds of thousands of men to pieces. Artillery accounted for more than 60% of the total missing and a high percentage of the wounded. German troops mainly held the high ground with its bonus of good observation, while artillery fire was important in all battles. It was devastating at Pazier, Fleur and Passchendaele. Counter-battery fire is designed to eliminate enemy artillery, spotting enemy artillery by flash and sound. Due to range, elevation and other factors, artillery fire was a very technically based operation, depending on many sources of information, such as observer aircraft, forward observation officers, telephones that were destroyed more often than not, and other sources such as runners and carrier pigeons. The soldiers of the guns could not physically see the target or the effect of their fire. It is also essential to harass and destroy enemy lines of communication, such as telephone lines, roads, railways, and to cause devastation to ammunition dumps, troops assembling for an attack and reinforcements being brought forward. It must also take out the barbed wire on the enemy's front, giving infantry fair access to enemy trenches. Eliminate machine gun posts. The Germans had very well developed deep trenches where they would descend as soon as artillery barges started. They would emerge and mount their machine guns as soon as the barrage lifted. The creeping barrage is keeping fire close in front of troops while they advanced to enemy trenches across no man's land. The weather created problems of timing the creeping barrage advance. Over good ground, not much problem, but in mud it became 100 yards in 4 minutes or 5 minutes. This timing was critical to the attack. Due to enemy counter-battery fire, artillery always had problems of safe location. Normally horse-drawn, the guns mainly on very narrow wheels 
they were very heavy and not easily moved, particularly in sand or the dreaded autumn and winter mud. From 1916 onwards, tanks on suitable ground often became a part of the attack phase. They played an important part in both clearing enemy barbed wire and silencing machine gun nests. Each attack had a different pattern and objectives for which the infantry were pre-trained behind their own lines on similar terrain using mock-ups. A reserve force was held behind the attackers for the purpose of overcoming strong resistance or further optimizing the attack. In World War I, it is estimated that 10 million died. 21 million were wounded, 7.7 million were missing or imprisoned. That adds up to a population more than double the size of Australasia in 2007, including all the men, women and children. While the killing was fairly equally distributed, percentage-wise, across the British Isles, Belgium, France, Germany, Austria, Hungary, the Balkans, Italy and Russia, we are concerned here with the slaughter of the Anzacs in Belgium and northern France, the Flanders region and the Picardy region of France, which includes the Somme and the Aisne departments. <laughs>